Instead of our regular scripture, I wanted to read out of my devotional, Jesus Calling. I actually read ahead this week because every day it's on bringing God into our thought process immediately when we get up. This morning says, As you get out of bed in the morning, be aware of my presence with you. You may not be thinking clearly yet, but I am. Your early morning thoughts tend to be anxious ones until you get connected with me. Invite me into your thoughts by whispering my name. Suddenly, your day brightens and feels more user-friendly. You cannot dread a day that is vibrant with my presence. You gain confidence through knowing that I am with you, that you face nothing alone. Anxiety stems from asking the wrong question. If such and such happens, can I handle it? The true question is not whether you can cope with whatever happens, but whether you and I together can handle anything that occurs. It is this you and I together factor that gives you confidence to face the day cheerfully. And I have moments, and I'm sure you all do, when things just hit you in the face. And so I thought this was good for all of us. I wanted to read the scriptures that go along with that devotional. Did you have time to get them up? Okay. So, we'll read them together in the NIV, and then I'm going to read them in a little bit different uh, translations. So, in the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. Phillips in the uh, message says, Listen, God, please pay attention. Can you make sense of these ramblings, my groans and cries? King God, I need your help. Every morning you'll hear me at it again. Every morning I lay out the pieces of my life on your altar and watch for fire to descend. And that's what we have to do. We have to wait in expectation about what God's going to do in our lives. When things look Bad, you just have to keep on persevering because you never know what's right around that next turn. Okay? And the next one is Psalm 63.1. Let's read together. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. The voice says it so close. But I just makes me think that the very first Thai song I heard blessed my heart. Of course, I couldn't understand a word of it, but I started to cry. I mean, the Holy Spirit came over me, and I couldn't understand why. So I went to the guy who played the piano and could speak English and said, what were the words? And it was based on this psalm, and because it's scary to go to a country and you don't know the language and you don't know the people and you certainly don't understand their culture. But in the voice, the newest translation I found says, O true God, you are my God and the one whom I trust. I seek you with every fiber of my being. In this dry and weary land with no water in sight, my soul is dry and longs for you. My body aches for you. For your presence. And that's all we have to do is whisper Jesus. And he's right there. And then the last one is Philippians 4, 13. I can do, okay, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. I like the NLT on this one, the New Living. It says, I have the strength to face all conditions. As I've told some people, when I knew God was calling me there, my first little reaction is, but God, it's hot, and the showers are cold, and the beds are hard, and the milk is warm. But I can face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. So you'll probably notice in your bulletins a little support sheet. I just wanted to say most of you 
See down at the bottom that abroad got left out. But visa, because I'm going to be talking about getting visas, which is, you know, staying in the country. But visa with our Free Methodist World Mission stands for Volunteers in Service Abroad. So I didn't want you to say, why is it visa when it's just Volunteers in Service? <laughs> okay. All right. As you probably have all heard by now, God is calling me back to Myanmar, which formerly was Burma, and that's in the green. Up until about Wednesday, I thought I was going to a country where the government is more and more open every day to foreigners, and so I called it Mission Myanmar. I had my prayer cards all blocked out and everything, and then she calls me from the uh, headquarters and said, oh, oops. (laughs) Your Asia area director said that Myanmar still has to be considered a creative access country, which means you don't tell anybody that you're going in there as a missionary, which I knew I was going to go in as a English as a foreign language, because here it's English as a second language when people come in, but when you're teaching in their own country, then it's English as a foreign language. And as a secretary for another little Christian school I'll tell you about soon, but now it's just pure that. I'm nothing on my prayer cards about Myanmar, so I'm going to be a missionary to Southeast Asia. So that's the little different. And I said, but Pastor Pa Kep says it's so open. And the young man that I'll be working with, too, on, in the third of my three jobs, said, but Pastor Pa Kep says it's so more open. So I call her back, and I said, but it's so more open. And she says, yes. But the government is still unpredictable, and they could change their laws and policies in a heartbeat. And I said, okay. So, while I was, next, yeah. while I was in uh, Thailand from 2007, 2009, many of you prayed for me while I was there and supported me. I was teaching English at two free Methodist churches. Well, your visas over there, you have to leave the country every 90 days. Usually, I rode the bus five hours, waited to get my Cambodian visa, walked across the border, turned around and walked back, got back on the bus, rode five more hours back to Bangkok. But a couple times I decided to do something, and one was to go to Myanmar. And as long as I was going to be there, I thought I'd stay a few days. And so they have a high school and a um, Bible school that I helped them with. And Pastor Pak Hep has been asking me to come back. And I kept saying, when I retire, I'll come back. Well, God said, I'm opening up the door now. So I said, okay. Pastor Pak Hep is the second superintendent of, go ahead, of uh, the Free Methodist Church in Burma. He's based in Yangon, which was formerly Rangoon. And until just very recently was still the capital of Myanmar. It looks like Myanmar, but they pronounce it Myanmar. And they've moved the capital. However, that's where I'm going to be based. Go ahead. And Pastor Pak Kep, like I said, is the superintendent of the Free Methodist Church. His father was one of the founding pastors and the first superintendent. He lived up in the mountains in the Chin State. And Pastor Paquette had come down and did a church plant in Yangon and then started the, uh, a preschool and a boarding school for kids from up in the mountains. And then he, uh, some of the kids wanted to go on to like a Bible college, and so he started a small Bible school. That's his wife, Nuta, and then their three, four, sorry, children, Johanna, Joshua, Rebecca, back in 2008. I didn't know Rebecca. She wasn't there yet, so I keep thinking three. Go ahead. So Pastor Pa Kep lives in a house which triples as the church and the Bible school classroom. Next. That's the living room, and then goes into an entry, and that was packed full, too. You'll see mostly the kids of the teachers, then your high school kids, Bible school students, and then there's more adults in the back. 
So during the week, the chairs are moved out into the edges, and that's where the Bible school meets. Next door, there was a house that had the little preschool. This is their real outreach to the Burma, I mean, to the Buddhist community. So a lot of little Buddhist kids come in, but they're able to sing Christian songs with them, which they sang for me. And uh, I more than likely won't be working with them hardly at all, but, you know, I love babies, so. (laughs) This is the old high school. This was about a half a block away. And the owner decided he no longer wanted to um, rent to Christians. And so he uh, quit, stopped them with the lease. And so around 2010, 2011, go ahead, they started building. They had to buy their own property and building the new boarding school. So the downstairs is one room. That's the classroom. Upstairs, there's the dorm rooms for the boys and the girls. This is mostly to teachers and their families and a few of the students that were just celebrating the building of the school. This is the students in the new classroom. And the library, uh, you know, we all know about our international child care ministry and they support the children, but they also have been very instrumental in helping build their little library because when I was there, Maybe one shelf was half full. So this is really awesome. So all those kids at the high school come from the Chin and the Shan states up in the mountains. And this is the road, the road to get there. And so Americans and and other foreigners and some of the Taiwan uh, people, our Taiwan Free Methodist Church has actually been the supporting church for the Myanmar Free Methodist Church, and so they donated money to buy motorcycles for the pastors, and so that's people taking them up to the villages. This was one of the first motorcycles for a pastor up there. When Pa Kep's father was the superintendent, he had to walk those mountains to go to his churches. took him eight months to visit all, I mean eight months, two months of continually walking, visiting, walking, visiting to go see all of his eight churches. The ladies in our church and the, some people in the Sunnyside Church uh, raised the funds for almost the entire amount for their WMI president, which is Women's Missionary International, so our women's missionary group was very interme- instrumental in getting their president her own motorcycle so she can go around and encourage the women. Okay. So, while I'm in uh, Thailand, a young man named Seth came to Thailand to work at seeing if he could get involved in getting kids out of human trafficking. But while he was there, he says, well, I'll help you with your English classes. So he was there for about six weeks. He had met Pastor Pa Kep at our last big world conference and said, well, I'm going to go into Burma too and see him. And they visited and talked. And so then he came back, stayed another six weeks. Pastor Pa Kep came over to Thailand to visit him, and that's when I met him. And we hit it off great. And then when I did go to visit it was even better. I fell in love with the, the Burmese people. I don't know why, <laughs> because Thailand has so much more technology and so many people teaching English, but on the street, you cannot get a Thai person to try to tell you anything in English. Where in Burma, they're so eager to practice their English. It was <laughs> amazing. And it was just a lot of fun. So as I'm explaining, you will see how Seth and Pakep got involved. So because it's a church and it's creative access, but even before I knew that, I knew that as a missionary, there is no way I could get a long-term visa. Now, we're in Thailand. You had to leave every 90 days. I'm going to have to leave every 70 days. First, I have to get uh, three 70-day tourist visas. If I do that and keep going back, then they think I'm 
obviously wanting to stay, and they're willing to give you a one-year visa. You still have to leave every 70 days, but the Hortons, who will go to the Lutheran church, they've been teaching over there in an international school. They said, can't get as much in Burma as you can buy in Thailand, she, she said. So it's a good trip to go and do shopping. So that's what I'll be flying out. All of this adds to the expense, but um, that's just, I mean, what you're going to have to face. So it's exciting that I found this woman named Wawa Tu, who's just started an A school in Asia. They call it School of Tomorrow. Go ahead. She just started on June 9th. She used to teach at our uh, Grace International School up at Chiang Mai, Thailand until last year. Um, I connected with her through our free Methodist missionaries who run the school, Don and Kathy Williams. I wrote to her and said, I'd like to come and do secretarial work for you part-time so that I can work in my church school. And she was very excited and said, that would be wonderful, and I will find you a place to live and work all that, all that out. So she's in the very center, and her two little twin girls are in the front, and her little boy is third from the left. There's an American woman you see. She's a uh, teacher. She's leaving this week praying to come back in September, and my dream is that we'll be roommates and share the expense of a little apartment. Another full-time teacher is Filipino, and the man on, man on the left is her part-time art teacher, and then the children. Anyway, so Wawa's husband uh, has a business, and it'll be actually through him I'll be able to get the work visa. There, they were at a wedding. I was just pulling up Facebook pictures so you could see them. And then the next one is her and her husband at an appreciation dinner at, uh, you can read back there, Grace International School Appreciation Dinner. Okay. Then back to Seth. So the third part of my job will be to work with Seth's In Better Hands ministry. Even though when he first went there, he thought he'd be part of the group, like possibly even working with the Burma Free Rangers, Free Burma Rangers, or any other organization that went in and got the kids back out of the brothels. But God opened his heart to be more in the preventative stage. So he has now started his own company or NGO called In Better Hands. And that's his guiding verse. Go ahead. Okay, so Seth ended up marrying Pakep's sister, Halan Halan, and I got to be at their wedding, and then after about six months, he got her into the United States, and last fall, they had little Jason, and they've started opening uh, these homes. So I'm going to read a little bit about each of them, but first I want you to hear again. I know you've all heard it every Freedom Sunday and at the conference that Helen and I put on, but um, it's only getting worse. Drug and child trafficking are now the top two most profitable illegal activities in the world. Child traffickers will go into the local villages where they will prey on innocent children. In this region, one of the most common ways in which a trafficker gains control of a child is through deceit and or a financial transaction. A trafficker will find a young child and offer a job opportunity in the city with a verbal commitment to the family that any money earned will be sent back to the family. Once the child is in the custody of the trafficker, the family rarely will see any money and the job in the city is not what was originally promised. The family living in the remote villages, as you saw how hard it is to get up there, many times does not understand what happens in the city and what will become of their child. So one of the places that we have a free Methodist church is Hakka, and that's where this first home was started. It's called Grace Children's Home. It currently has these five children. Then the next one. This is Jason's Branch Children's Home. It was started to care for uh, 
children up in the Shan State, in the located in the city of can't pronounce it Tongyi. Shan State is located in eastern Myanmar, bordering the countries of China, Laos, and Thailand. There are nine children there currently, and this being uh, uh, manned, or the house parents are a Christian man named Pa Ling and his sister. They were orphans when they were uh, young, and so they've always wanted to care for orphans. And so uh, the great thing about here, these homes are they're being supported by Americans mostly, but that way the house parents can make sure that you know they're fed but and have schooling, but they also do daily uh, Bible studies. Then the third home are, is called Angel's Children's Home. This is the newest home, and it's located in the city of Tai Chalaik, which is located in northeastern Myanmar, and this city borders Thailand and is the gateway for almost all the drug and child trafficking between those two countries. They are now in the process of opening two more homes, and right now he's asked me to do a little clerical work for them, hopefully uh, just trying to make sure that the monies that come in to support these homes uh, will get to the homes properly. But he's also asked me, because, you know, when he was there for all those weeks, I told him about when I was in Haiti and I started a child evangelism program and I taught the teachers how to make Sunday school or Bible clubs fun. And he said, that's what I'd like you to do is make these Bible studies that these home parents are are giving fun and memorable and not just boring because, you know, sorry, when you're in third world, they pretty much just read it out of the Bible and and we like to have fun, huh, Deb? So my dream is then, if I'm going to be working with the Bible school students, wouldn't it be good to have a little course on child evangelism where they could help me build this curriculum so that I'd make sure that it was culturally sound, but then they would also translate it into Burmese because, you know, I learned a little bit of Haitian and I learned a little bit of Spanish and I learned a teeny, teeny bit of Thai and I will learn my famous two phrases, God bless you and where's the bathroom? So... Those are the three things I'll be doing. And uh, the last thing that Seth does, if we can support the widows, which is what we've been praying for with our ladies group, because then they won't be tempted to send their kids off to the city. So, As you probably all know, I still have a base of supporters that have been supporting me all through the years. Some came on when I went to Thailand and continued to support me when I came up here because they knew the church couldn't afford me. And so I have that. And then I also have um, some other income. So even though every time I turn around, the lady in the home office is increasing my amount that I need to raise... I really only have $400 a month left to raise and about $5,000 startup. That includes their $1,200 administration fee, their uh, insurance, which assures if something happened to me, they'd get the body out, and, you know, plus medical insurance. But they want you to pay that up front, and that's $1,920. Then the flight over there... I had a one-way ticket because if you can't make a round trip over one year, so I thought, well, that's okay. I'm going to be there for over a year. However, they've assured me that I am only being approved for one-year renewable, but I'm asking for a two-year commitment because I'm pretty tight. And if I don't have to fly back to the cost of $1,200 to $1,500, to come around all the churches and say, will you support me for one more year, which would probably cost me close to another $1,000 traveling and staying and stuff, I would have saved about two months' worth of living expenses. However, as you will see on that little support sheet, I assure you, if I am made to come back home, 
your commitment is just canceled. So you're only saying, yes, if you can stay there for two years, Carol, I'll support you for two years so you don't have to come and spend all that money <laughs> that you could use better. Of course, the very first thing I'm asking for first and foremost, and it's always been, is prayer support. If I don't have a strong prayer base, it's just too hard. And so this church, as you all know, started supporting me 20 years ago. It'll be December. It'll be 20 years ago. And you supported me up till just before, the year before I came up here. You were my most dedicated. You even beat my home church of Chewila. And I just want to thank you again for how faithful you were to me and also for the joy and the blessing it was to be able to be up here and, and live with you and minister with you and just want you to know how much I've fallen more and more in love with you and I appreciate you so much. So the ladies at Curves decided that they were going to throw a, a yard sale for me to raise funds for that startup money. That's going to be Friday, August 1st, right in front of Curves. So if you have anything you want to donate to a uh, yard sale, keep it aside and bring it the day before because we don't have room to store anything. And just to let everyone know, my appointment here as associate pastor ends on the 31st of July. But the board is gracious and said if they haven't hired a new pastor, I can stay in the parsonage till the 21st of August so that I can work at Curves and make a little more money because the rest of August and into September and maybe the first week in October, I'll be traveling, and that costs. Gas is expensive. And the dream is that I will fly on October 13th, which is a Monday. So, but that's all the dream. She keeps telling me every time I talk to her, her name is Patty, don't buy a ticket until I approve everything. I said, I got it, I got it. <laughs> However, even though I'm going to be here, you're going to hardly see me. This Sunday I'll be at family camp. The following Sunday I will be at an annual conference and hopefully speaking at a church in Caldwell. I'll be here on the 20th, and of course... We're all going to pray together that Lowell be back and healthy and have his retirement party so I can be here to celebrate. And then I am gone the rest of the time. Uh, I have to go to Chehalis, and that ACE school requires you to take a week training before they allow you to work there, even as the secretary, so you just know what they're all about. So I'm going to do that and hopefully speak at a church over there. And then I come back, and while I'm here in August, I will be hopefully speaking Priest River the first week. He's not given me the total answer, but for sure I'll be in Missoula the second Sunday and then Post Falls the third Sunday and then that following Thursday I'll be out of here. So, If there's any questions, let me know. And uh, if you want to give me any money now, it will go towards travel and raising support trips. And, but if you want to just start supporting me to go there, uh, I would like to start receiving that in September so I actually have it ready for when I go in October. So if there's anything else you want to ask me, I'll be around. All right. Thanks. God bless you. I wanted to close with this song.